Okay, boys and girls, on this super sunny day, we are going to be talking about whether or not the Gerber strong arm is still viable in a realistic knife choice or option in the year 2022. Now, before we jump into this, as always, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon. It all helps a ton, and I definitely appreciate your support. Now, the reason why I want to make this video, some people may be asking, you know, uh, this knife was released, uh, you know, like five five, seven, or five, six, maybe even seven years ago. I kind of forget at this point, I think it was like 2015. So this knife is by no means new, but the reason why I wanted to do a revised video on it is that this knife still gets a lot of interest and even to this day, it still gets a lot of people wanting to check it out, see if it's a good blade. And like I said, there's a lot of interest for this knife. So I thought that a lot of the older reviews out there kind of don't do this knife as much justice as it should get. And granted, this is not going to be the most positive video, but I did want to discuss whether or not this knife is still good in this day and age in 2022 with all the other options and offerings out there. So the first thing I will say about this knife is when it was introduced, its introdu introductory price by Gerber was a lot more affordable. This knife, when it dropped, was around $50 to $60. And unfortunately, it is now around $80 to $100. Now, that being said, now that it is a higher price bracket, that means that its competitive options have kind of changed. This is no longer a direct comparison against things like the SRK, C, or Compact. This is something that is now more in the SE4 type range. And we will get into competitive options in a little bit to discuss that and break it down a little bit further. But as far as it goes, I did a video not too long ago talking about knives that were better than this, and I got a lot of interesting comments, and a lot of them tried to, the ones that were justifying the Gerber strong arm, talked heavily about how, you know, it's a very strong knife and how it's built in the U.S. over other foreign competitors or options that are on the market and exist. And the first thing I do want to say is that while yes, this knife is vaguely full tang, we really only see just a tiny bit of the tang. So I'm really not sure how thick the tang is once it gets into the handle. It has shown in many tests to be quite strong and mine, though I haven't used the heck out of it, has been just fine as far as uh, durability goes. But so we're not really sure just how full this full tang is, but also to a lot of people talk about how, you know, it's made in the U.S. And I want to address the first or these couple things. And that is that first off, just because a knife is full tang doesn't necessarily make it a strong knife. It does have to have a reasonable amount of thickness and quality put into the blade. So whether it's USA made or foreign made, Full tang knives aren't always, you know, exactly what you think. It really depends on the build quality of the blade. The next point is the USA made portion. Now, yes, USA made tools, items, knives are usually built to a higher quality control. So they are usually higher quality, but this blade does still use the same cheap Chinese 420 HC that their foreign, that Gerber's foreign products use. So just because many people will say, oh, this is a USA made knife and it's, you know, strong because it's built here uh, domestically, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. Uh, just because you make a knife in the US, if you're still using cheap Chinese uh, components or, you know, equipment or steel, it doesn't necessarily make the knife quality just because it's made in the U.S. You being USA made doesn't imbue a knife with magical powers of quality and, you know, durability. So I do want to say that some people may say, oh, you know, this is a USA made knife, so you know you can trust it. And that's just uh, not always the case. And so I do want to just throw that out there to, you know, make sure that people are in the right mind or frame of mind. So as far as the Gerber strong arm goes from a pure user standpoint, this knife isn't a bad knife for tactical use, though I do think that there are better, better options out there. And overall, I just think that this knife really is a middle of the road kind of mediocre option. And I think that they want quite a bit of money for a very mediocre knife. And for me personally, though I am certainly not the only one out there, I do say, I do have to say that the ergonomics for the Gerber strong arm are very underwhelming and the knife never really feels quite right in the hand, especially over uh, a long term or if you are using it. In addition to that, as I pointed out in other videos, hopefully I can show it off in this one, the 
the grind on this blade really you kind of get shafted on because it is not complete uh, the way that they grind this blade they really leave about a quarter of an inch un of unsharpened material that's just there to insult you so i don't think that they necessarily do the best job at making or grinding out this knife and i do think that uh you know, while that's not necessarily a deal breaker, uh, something I try to communicate with my reviews and my videos is that when you see the lack of quality, it, whether it's, you know, in the grind or in the spine or whatever, that's indicative of the whole knife not really being uh, a quality tool and that they're kind of slapping it together and just pushing it out to consumers. And so that's why I'm so particular and kind of nitty gritty about things is when you see things that are off-putting, it usually indi indicates that uh, the tool may not be up to snuff so the first one i want to cover is one that is more leaning on the tactical side and is pretty much exactly the same amount of money as the strong arm these guys are both around 80 dollars and this one is the k-bar bk18 now this one is similarly colored to my uh strong arm they are both tan but you can get black models of i think actually both of these knives but i just like tan more now like i said this one is a little bit more tactical because of its harpoon blade design so if you are going for a more tactical around hundred dollar mark blade the bk18 by k bar is definitely a much better option it is still of course full tang it is of course still made in the usa but overall it is made out of 1095 cv which is one of uh, k bar's proprietary steels but it is very good it's basically a chromium and vanadium mixed 1095 to give you slightly higher um, rust resistance and slightly higher edge retention but that aside you are also getting much much better ergonomics and i personally like the sheath a bit more though they are basically the same they're both thermoplastic uh, sheaths and at this price point you know this is basically what you're going to expect to get but honestly they're really not bad i do have both set up as scout style because that's usually how i carry my knives but because that's usually how I carry these types of knives. But overall, the BK18 is a much, much better choice. And once again, being every bit as durable and every bit as usable as the strong arm, the only difference is that this is far easier and far nicer to hold. It doesn't have an annoying upper, uh, kind of upper protrusion. I don't even know if I'd really call that a guard because it's not really a guard, but you know, that kind of like upper ramp that just annoys the heck out of you if you try to choke up on the blade. But uh, overall, this is really just a much better and more usable option, whether it is for a tactical purpose for military or militaristic use, or whether you're, you're looking to use it outdoors, this is still a pretty fantastic option. Now, like I mentioned, the SC, or sorry, now, like I mentioned earlier, the Gerber Strongarm is really now pushing more into the $100 range. And when we get talking about right at $100, maybe just a little bit over $100, we start talking about things like the SC4. And the SC4 is absolutely better than the Gerber Strongarm. Now, they are, once again, very similar. And these two are very similar in blade profile. Now, the SC, of course, is full flat grind, whereas this is just a flat grind but they are very similar of course this one is made out of 1095 in the U.S. just like the uh, strong arm is made in the U.S. but the SC4 is much much more durable and like I almost forgot to mention of course the SC is full tank so you are getting a much better option here and a much more durable more usable knife of course it has a nice forward choil for you to get a good uh, finger groove or to get your finger choked up on if you need to do more fine tasks and overall while the SC4 I think is actually just slightly smaller than the strong arm it is certainly a competitor and actually pretty darn good and funny enough when you actually put the cutting edge to the cutting edge the sc4 is just slightly longer because they failed to properly grind the strong arm and so that is really what makes all the difference and that's why i emphasize like they failed to grind this blade so this sc4 which is a smaller knife than the strong arm has the same exact cutting edge so because it's properly grind you have a forward finger choil so you can get right up on that edge if you're trying to do fine tasks and it is just honestly a better blade better engineering and a 
lot more comfortable to hold. So whether it comes down to the K-Bar BK18 or the SE4, they are some serious competitive options that honestly blow away the strong arm. So if you are looking at a strong arm in 2022, obviously you're watching a video, you know, kind of a review after the fact or a retrospective review i would say that you know the strong arm is not a bad knife if you did buy one by mistake and you have it i wouldn't necessarily say that it's a piece of junk or it's a garbage knife they are very strong um, of course it does depend on your application so if your application is more fine tasks or more you know tactically oriented the bk18 truly is a better option but this knife will not necessarily fail you it's just a knife that is pushed out on consumers without much thought or effort put into the actual quality or integrity of the tool which unfortunately really is gerber as it stands today gerber really was a good brand but I think the strong arm really sums up Gerber in a nutshell nowadays. And that is that they try to give the appearance of a quality tool with the price of a quality tool without actually delivering on a quality tool. They may be making it in the U.S., but it's still being made out of cheap Chinese steel with, you know, glaring uh, ergonomics and blade misses and overall it's just really not the best tool to go for even the sheath itself while it is ambidextrous and that is cool is definitely far from perfect it is very very cheap even in comparison to the bk18 once again you know same uh, price point uh, they are both thermoplastics but this one is definitely a lot higher quality and while it isn't necessarily ambidextrous it is kind of ambidextrous in the way that you can flip your mounting uh, you know attachment point to either side giving it essentially an ambidextrous carry so you know there are things that the BK18 does that are very similar to the strong arm just a lot better and with more intention more design and more effort so that is the Gerber strong arm in 2022 what i think about it nowadays i would recommend if at all possible steering clear of this guy not just because i'm a gerber hater but really because there are better options out there as always guys god bless and i'm out